Oh, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cardinal's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today, we're going through a fun new little deck that I've been seeing on Arena, but I was like, I think I can make it a little bit better. But before we do, we go and remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and we love you very much for it, and the link will be down below. Uh, today, we are going through the Unholy Grounds. It's basically a black-white cleric deck, and there's a lot of cool clerics out there, and we'd like to go ahead and try it out see how it goes and one specialty creature which might throw you off for sure <laughs> which will make it a brew right but anyways uh, the first creature we have is speaker of the heavens it's a one drop one one vigilance lifelink human cleric this guy gets super annoying once he st starts going but tap create a four four white angel creature token with flying activate this ability only if you have seven or more life start from your starting life total and only if you do it as a sorcery which will kind of actually come up pretty quickly if you just keep going with it Next up, Cleric of Life's Bond. He is a black and a white for a 2-2. Whenever another cleric enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, put a 1-1 one -one counter on this dude. Wow. So each turn, yeah. you, he gets a counter. Yeah. Almost always, if you have any kind of drain or like a life linker. He's just like, cool. Block, get a counter. Yeah, he's almost a rare. Like, how good he is in a cleric deck it gets ridiculous. The next one is Luminarch Aspirant. It's a 1 and a white, 1-1. One -one. At the beginning of your combat turn, put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature you control. This guy is an amazing bomb and standard. I love playing this guy. Any white deck you put, play, you play him. You're just like, my dudes get bigger. My turn one now is a 2-2 Vigilance swinging with lifelink. Thanks. Next is the Null Priest of Oblivion. It is a black and one for a 2-1 uh, Vampire Cleric. Got Menace and lifelink and Kicker 4. Whenever it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it's like a cool grave digger, which is really nice, but it's otherwise it's just a 2-1 minus lifelink, which is yeah. good by itself. Yeah, literally, you just, every turn, just swinging and gaining two life. Well, they need two blockers, right? And because you have to, because you're playing black and it's a kill card, and he has lifelink, just in case, it's a 1 and 2 black murderous rider. It's a 2-3 lifelink. When he dies, uh, shuffle, put it at the bottom of your library, <clears throat> but... It has an adventure of Swift In, which is one and two black. Instant, destroy target creature or planeswalker, you lose two life, and that's, you just need this guy in every black deck ever. Yeah, because it's it's a kill spell creature. Yeah, that's what it is. Kills planeswalkers for three, and he can gain you life, the life back, so you're good. Next up is Tabarax, Hope's Demise. It is a black and two for a two two flyer. He has lifelink as long as there's five more counters on him, and whenever another non token creature you control dies, put a one one counter on him. If that creature was a cleric, you may draw a card. If you do, you lose one life. Yep. So this guy paired with the other guy that gives counters is already really good. And on top of that, you'll get counters for free because clerics die. Yeah. And you draw cards. And you draw cards. So I can't even remember the three drop knight that everyone used to play. But there's like, uh, you lose a dude, you draw a life. Or yeah. you draw a card, you lose a life. This is him. But then he can also gain you that life back. So uh, towards the end, it's not like hurting you at all. Of course, we have Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. It's two and a black, uh, one, three. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And then you can pay uh, two black and three. All creatures you have control have lifelink. So just swing in and just do so much damage, no matter what. Uh, next is Aura, the Skyclave Hierophant. He is a white, black, and two for a three, three, four, four cleric. Yep. He's got lifelink. Whenever him or another cleric you control dies, return target cleric card with lesser cover mana cost from the graveyard to the battlefield. So he just replaces your clerics with a littler dude, which yeah. is already good because you're like, cool, this dude dies, I get another one. Yeah, thanks. Like, you just keep hopefully rotating it, you know. This this deck has a lot of like modern synergies that people used to play with uh, Matter Reshaper and all that stuff mm -hmm. where you're just like, or the, the Scavenger where you just go through artifacts. This is kind of doing it with clerics. And then the other stuff is you're basically gaining life and losing, they're losing life, you know. It's doing a lot of synergy with it, thank God. And this one is Angel of Destiny. It's three and two white. He's an Angel Cleric, two six, has flying double strike. But whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you and that player gain that much life. Awkward, right? You don't <laughs> want your opponent to gain life. But at the beginning of your end step, if you have at least 15 more than your starting life total, each player... Angel of Destiny attack this turn loses the game. So, it's really ridiculous. So, if you just do a big swing and you gain life, and then it's like, oh, you have 15 more than your life total, which all your dudes pretty much have life link, then you just win. Because no matter what. That's weird. Yeah, yeah, it's super weird. It's very bad. 
If you have this and Veto, then they basically don't gain that life. They take all that damage anyway. So therefore, you know, you're good. So, <laughs> so it equals out that way, but it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, that's still wild because you can just be like, hey, cool, you lose. Thanks. Thanks. I, you just lose the game. It's okay. It's all good. Uh, next up is the first spell we got, Vanishing Light. It is a white and two for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-line permanent opponent controls until it leaves. Just so. So you, good. You needed to get rid of Planeswalkers and all the other silly shenanigans. Yeah, all their enchantments, all their stuff. And also, we have Eta Extinction, three in a black instant. Exile target creature or Planeswalker, like the top card of your library, you may put them in the graveyard. Black White has all the good, all the good all the kill, kill spells. spells. Elspeth Conquers Death. It is two white and three. Uh, the first saga is exile target permanent opponent controls with the greater man cost three or greater. Number two, non-creature spells your opponent cost cast two more to cast this until your next turn. And three, return target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard to the battlefield, put a one counter on it, or a loyalty counter on it. Yeah. Simple as that. that that's exactly what it does. It's yeah, that bringing back dudes is what it needs to be doing. And we have a one of Thwarth the Grave. It's four and two black sorcery. The spell costs one less for each creature in your party, so you have a cleric all the time, so it's only going to cost five. Return target creature card and up to one cleric blah, 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 creature card from the graveyard to your battlefield. Yada, yada, yada. Basically, you get two dudes for five. Yeah. As long as you have a creature on the battlefield, which makes this just your dudes just keep coming back over yeah. and over. And that's what you just want to do. It's kind of what clerics do, too. So this seems like the perfect balance of you have tons of dudes, you have tons of kill, and then you can recur your dudes that, you know, are always going to be killed. They're going to be killed and murdered all the time. So with that, we go to the lands. We have the Bright Climb Pathway, uh, which is the black-white flip land, which is pretty awesome. We have the Castle of Lock Lane, the black one that comes into play tapped unless you control Swamp, and you pay three, uh, lose life for how many cards you have in your hand and draw a card. So pretty much as simple as that. And then the Swamp and Plains. That's all it really is. Simple as that. Like I said, I know I used a, a temple on my last deck, the Blue White Flyers. I removed it on Arena because it pissed me off because <laughs> I literally needed that land to be untapped to win the game, and it's really screwed me over so no more temples from here on out no matter what <laughs> with that we we don't have sideboards really but we have honorable mentions just in case you can put in the sideboard or know that whatever the meta is on arena that you can swap to it but we have containment priest it's one in a white two two flash cleric if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast exile it instead so therefore the Definitely the rogue decks that come into play when they're just like, pay four, or here's this rogue, eh, get them out of here. No, no thanks. No thanks. And Magara, the di diplomat, it's three and a one, uh, cleric, two, four, lifelink. Whenever opponent attacks with creatures, or two or more of those creatures are attacking, or planeswalkers you control, draw a card. And then whenever opponent casts their second spell, each turn, draw a card. So this is against, obviously, aggro, or control as well, for whoever wants to keep casting their spells and all that fun stuff. So. Just a thought. I mean, they're both clerics, so you know, it goes with the theme. Uh, with that, uh, prepare yourself to watch the arena gameplay next week. Hopefully it's fun, hopefully it goes well. But with that, hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island. Goodbye. Later. Also guys, make sure you hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel, and then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. And we go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.